Our second unit is called Families of Organic Compounds. And here we're going to explore some bigger ideas in organic chemical structure, as well as ways to detect and characterize and better understand these groupings of atoms that we're gonna call functional groups. And the star of our organic chemistry IRL video for this unit is Dr. Jen Heemstra. Dr. Heemstra is a biochemist currently at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. She earned her BS from the University of California in Irvine in 2000 and her PhD from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in 2005. And the article we're gonna focus on today is titled, Protein-Based Molecular Recognition Tools for Detecting and Profiling RNA Modifications. So to break down this title a little bit, first of all, we've got protein-based molecular recognition tools. These are presumably tools or methods grounded in proteins for recognizing molecular changes. And what they want to recognize and detect and, and understand are modifications to RNA, ribonucleic acids. Now, from high school biology and just general education, you're probably familiar with the central dogma of biology, right? That inside cells, DNA is transcribed into RNA, and that RNA is then translated into proteins. But there's more to this story. That RNA, often before it gets translated, is modified through chemical changes to residues along the nucleic acid chain into what we might simply call modified RNA. And the goal of the Heemster group and others cited in this paper is to recognize and better understand and track those mod modifications to RNA using chemical tools, using protein-based tools. And one they focus on early in the article is the chemical conversion of adenine, or the adenosine nucleoside, which you see here, into a different nucleoside called enosine. And the chemical structures here are somewhat different. Both have the two ring system, but we can see that a nitrogen has been transformed into an oxygen, and there have been some changes in the bonding patterns around atoms in the vicinity of that nitrogen and oxygen. And so we can describe and understand the chemical change that's going on here in the language of what we'll call functional groups. And we're gonna dive into functional groups in this second chapter of the course. And two that I'll point out right here are the NH2 group and the CO double bond linked to a nitrogen, highlighted in orange here. The nitrogen connected to three different carbon or hydrogen groups is known as an amino group or an amine, and the CO double bond linked to nitrogen is known as an amide, and these are two examples of functional groups. Functional groups are actually a highly useful way for, of thinking about organic chemistry just because they get you seeing and thinking and communicating kind of at the right level of structure. We're not too low level looking at individual atoms, but we're not so high level that we're really looking at too much of the forest and missing important things about the trees, so to speak. So functional groups allow us to describe and see structures kind of at a useful level. For example, breaking down this, you know, what seems like a very complicated process of modifying RNA, complicated chemically because a lot of bonds and atoms are involved and really focusing in on what matters. What's really going on here? Well, the conversion of an amino group to an amine. As we've already seen in this video, this also gives us a useful way to think about and understand and describe chemical change. What's happening in this reaction? An amine is being converted to an amine. Very concise, but very meaningful and very descriptive way to communicate what's going on here. And so the paper dives into conversions like this that convert immediately transcribed RNA into modified RNA, as well as some of the tools that the Heemster group and others have used to understand this chemistry. The other thing we're gonna dig into in this unit is infrared spectroscopy, which is a way to detect and characterize functional groups within organic molecules. So for example, the amino group has a particular spectroscopic signature we might say, a particular pattern of infrared absorption signals. And the same is true of the amide. And so we could imagine, for example, using infrared spectroscopy to detect chemical changes like this, primarily in smaller molecules rather than large nucleic acids and, and proteins. But the basic principle is exactly the same. 